So it's your teacher again at the course, and in this video, we'll be talking about flames. Um, as you can see, uh, flames are what many of you refer to as fire, and how is fire produced? That is what we want to be talking about in this video. And this video is necessary because we are dealing with air, and uh, most of the flames produced require the oxygen of the air to form. What is a flame? You know, in, uh, like in one of the first year classes, I was asked which state of matter is flame? That is fire, a solid, a liquid, or a gas, or even plasma. So I have to let them know that a fire, a flame, is not a matter in the first place. So according to our definition now, a flame is just a region. A region where gases chemically combine with the production of heat and light when some when gases combine together when gases react and heat and lights are produced you call that a flame so that is what a flame is a flame is not a state of matter a flame is just a region of chemical reaction that brings about production of heat and light we have two types of flames. Two types of flame. We have luminous flame, even that is yellow in color, that you can that that you can use to see light when there is darkness. You call that luminous. Luminous is from the word light. When you say I am illuminated, that means I am enlightened. So a luminous flame is a yellow flame, as you can see, and a non-luminous flame is a blue flame, sometimes a colorless flame. Now, a luminous flame is a bright yellow colored flame produced as a result of presence of solid particles in the flame. That is what brings about a luminous flame. What makes a flame yellowish and luminous? Brings of solid particles inside that flame. And what makes what other things makes flame luminous? Number one, I've talked about solid particles being present in the flame. Number two, when there's an increase in temperature or pressure of the burning gases, then the flame becomes luminous. When you increase the temperature of the gases that are burning, flame becomes luminous. And number three, insufficient supply of air. And this is one of the most uh, important factors that determine whether a flame is luminous or not majorly when the flame is uh, when the uh, when the air supply is not sufficient there will be incomplete combustion of that particular substance and uh, the flame that will be coming out will be a luminous flame is a sign of incomplete combustion what's a non-luminous flame is one that is faint bluish or almost colorless flame now a non-luminous flame is utter than a luminous flame that's why you observe that your gas cooker cook faster than kerosene stove because kerosene stove produces uh, a luminous flame while gas cooker produces a non-luminous flame blue color like this you see it in gas cookers now there are three substances we are going to consider their flame number one will be hydrogen number two that's hydrogen fuel now number two we'll talk about candu flame and then, we'll, uh, and then finally, we'll, we're going to talk about the structure of a Bunsen flame. Bunsen burner that we use in the laboratory also produces its own type of flame. A hydrogen uh, gas burns with a non-luminous blue flame. As you can see on the screen, this kind of flame is hydrogen flame. It has two structures. The flame of hydrogen has two structure. In the, uh, sorry, has a structure with two zones. Number one the zone of unburnt gas number two the zone of complete combustion so uh, so uh, so look at the structure of hydrogen flame now and ensure that you draw it this part especially where it where it was labeled draw the structure of hydrogen flame into your notes if you are using one so the first one is the zone of complete combustion the outside you know the outside of the of the flame there's enough oxygen outside 
So the gases there will be burning completely and the flame that we produce will be uh, a, a non-luminous flame. Why the zone that is closer to the uh, uh, to the tube from where the gas is coming out is the zone of unburnt gases. The gas present there are not burnt. So the temperature there will be, will be lower than the one of outside where we have sufficient oxygen to burn the gas. So only two zones in hydrogen flame. The zone of unburnt gas at the middle of the flame then the zone of complete combustion outside the flame. So let's see the candle flame. Uh, many of us are used to candle, and if you're a Catholic church member, candle is part and parcel of the mass that you do. And you can compare how the flame in candle is with the flame in hydrogen. They're actually very different. You can use a candle flame to, uh, to light a whole church, and people will do service in a church with ordinary candle light. But 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 we're going to do that one with uh with hydrogen flame because because hydrogen flame is non-luminous. Why candle flame is luminous? As you can see, the color is yellowish, is luminous uh in nature. Candle flame has four distinct zones. Number one is the zone of unburnt gas, the the one that is around the the thread. You this is the weak. This thread is the wick. This thread. So the zone around that wick, the gases there are unburnt. You call it the zone of unburnt gases. Then the bright yellow luminous zone of incomplete combustion. The zone of incomplete combustion, that's at the middle. Then the barely visible non-luminous zone of complete combustion that is at the outside. You know, at the outside, there's sufficient oxygen. Like I told you before, there's sufficient oxygen on the outside of the flame. So all the gases present on the outside will be burning completely. And the flame they produce is going to be a luminous, uh, a non-luminous flame whose temperature is very, very hot. You know, around the week, there's unburnt gases. Then we have blue zone here. Of uh, well, so we have blue, uh, so we have blue zone there. Then that uh, that blue zone is a blue zone of complete combustion at the base of the gas. Uh, at the base of the flame, we have blue zone of complete combustion. Then at the outside of the flame, there's complete combustion. Also, a non uh, uh, a non luminous flame is produced there. But at the middle of the flame, there's incomplete combustion. There's a non there's a luminous flame at the middle of the zone. So those are the four zones present in the candle flame. I, I, I want to draw this diagram to show the structure of a candle flame. You can see here the thread. That's the wick. Around the wick, you have the unburnt gases. This is the unburnt gases, that whitish area. Then you have the blue zone. Here is a blue zone of complete combustion. Then this middle, this middle flame, yellowish in color. There's incomplete combustion in the middle of the flame, so the zone is a luminous zone because gases don't burn completely there. Then at the outside of the flame, where there's enough oxygen for combustion, there's a non-luminous flame. Then it's barely visible; you may not see it. But if you put your hand at the top of a candle flame, not inside, on top, you will see that it's very, very hot at the outside than the inside of a candle flame. So some scientists have gone now to measure the temperature of this flame. So for the inside, 800 degrees Celsius. In the middle, 1,000. Then at the outside... 1,400, that is where there's complete combustion. You don't need to draw this structure, but just to compare the temperature of different zones in a candle flame. So, 
once again, these are the four zones, the zone of unburnt gas around the wick, the bright yellow luminous zone of, complete combo of incomplete combustion, then the non-luminous zone of complete combustion, and the blue zone at the base of the flame. That blue zone is at the base of the flame. You see that it's also outside. The base of the flame is outside also, so there's complete combustion there and give us a blue gas. Now, bouncing flame. A bouncing burner can produce two types of flame depending on the amount of oxygen that is entering inside the hole of the of the of the bouncing burner. When the hole is completely open, there is sufficient oxygen and then the flame that will come out is a non-luminous flame because where there's sufficient oxygen, there's complete combustion. But when the air hole is closed, when the air hole is closed, there's not enough oxygen and the flame coming out is a, non, a, 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 a luminous flame because there is incomplete combustion present there. This is a luminous flame caused when the air holes are fully closed or only partially closed. So there is uh, a luminous flame there. And there is non-luminous flame when the air holes are open. So when oxygen is able to enter, then the flame will be non-luminous. The more the oxygen that enters, the more non-luminous the flame is. Don't forget that non-luminous flame is hotter than a luminous flame. And luminosity is caused when there is incomplete combustion, when there is solid particles in the air, and also when the, there is increase in temperature or pressure of the burning gases. Now, now, now let us look at the luminosity of a bouncing flame. Like I told you before, you are going to have a, non -lu uh, uh, a luminous flame when the base of the bouncing burner air hole is closed. So there will be a luminous flame. And the kind of structure you are going to have is like that of Kandu, where you have four zones. The blue zone under, the middle zone of incomplete combustion, which is yellow, the outside zone of complete combustion, which is non-luminous. Now, for non-luminous bouncing flame, the air inlet must be open, must be fully open. When the air inlet is fully open, there is sufficient oxygen to burn the gas that is coming inside from this air hole. So, the gas coming inside from this air hole, we have sufficient oxygen to be burnt because the air inlet is opened. And then you expect the flame that is coming to be a non-luminous flame, a blue flame, hot flame, very hot flame. So that's what you use in the laboratory. If you want to produce a flame with low temperature, close the air inlet. The flame becomes yellow and not very hot. If you need a very hot temperature for your experiment, open the air inlet, then the flame will be blue and very, very hot. So in a non-luminous bouncing flame, there are three zones. Number one, we have the zone of unburnt gas, the luminous zone, and the outer non-luminous zone. You can expect that the luminous zone must be in the middle where there is no enough oxygen from the outside. Then the unburnt gas will be even inside the inner part of the flame. Of course, you always expect that the non-luminous zone will be at the outside because there will be complete combustion there. So you need to draw this structure of a bouncing flame. It's a structure for bouncing flame when there is sufficient oxygen, that is when the air inlet is open for enough air to enter. At the outside, at the outside, there's luminous zone. At the middle, uh, sorry, at the outside there's non-luminous zone. At the middle there's a luminous zone. And at the inner core, we have zone of unburnt gas. So this, so this structure of a bouncing flame, when the air inlet is open, when the air inlet is closed, it's just another candle flame that you have produced. Now, the strike back of a bouncing burner. 
the strike back of Ibon Simbona. Uh, when is it possible to see explosion in the laboratory from Ibon Simbona? Now, when the first supply to Ibon Simbona is slowly turned down, or the air inlet is opened wide all of a sudden. Now look at that. When you slowly turn down the air supply, the fuel supply, or the air inlet is opened wide. Don't make a mistake. When the fuel supply is slowly turned down, you are removing the fuel slowly, or you open the oxygen, the air inlet, very wide. Now, the rate at which the fuel will be burning will be faster than the rate at which the fuel is supplied. Don't forget, if you reduce the, the fuel level gradually, there will be more combustion than the fuel that is coming out. Or, if you open wide the oxygen and remain at the same level of fuel supply, oxygen that is here will make, will make the combustion to be faster. That means the rate at which gases will be burning will be more than the rate at which it is being supplied. Now, what will happen is this. When you have that situation, what will happen is this. The, the, the flame that is being produced will be, we enter inside the tube. This tube. This flame will enter inside the tube to consume any oncoming fuel. You are looking, the, uh, the flame will not be looking for fuel and enter into, the, uh, into this tube, see fuel there, consume it, enter into this tube, see fuel there, com consume it, begin to enter into the tube and begin to consume any oncoming fuel. And then that will lead to explosion. You call that phenomenon strike back of a bouncing burner. It's a phenomenon whereby if the flame enters into the tube of the bouncing burner to consume any oncoming fuel and this will lead to explosion so this is what you call the strike back of a bouncing burner god bless you